Well, back in the 1950s, British Columbia was self-sufficient when it came to hydroelectric power. Well, today, that's not the story. We are a net importer of power, and that power is coming from northwestern United States, and it's coming from Alberta, and it's coming from the burning of fossil fuels. The ghost town of Sandin, however, is totally self-sufficient with its electrical requirements. Nestled amongst mining relics and on the banks of a bustling creek lies a hydroelectric gem. The Silversmith Generating Station has been operating continuously since 1897. The equipment is under the care of Hal Wright, owner of a successful trucking company who lives in Sandin with his family. When he's not driving trucks and maintaining his own hydroelectric plant, Hal also is restoring a fleet of electric buses. Sandin is nestled in a forgotten valley in the West Kootenays. It's 15 kilometers east of New Denver and an hour and a half from Nelson. It's easy to get up here. I met up with Hal just outside the old power plant. So essentially anybody can take this tour. Absolutely. If they come here to Sandin. Yeah. Just what we're gonna do. Yeah. Let's go in and have yeah. a look. Is it gonna cost them? Nope. Uh, free tour. This power plant is the oldest operating one in the, in the North American grid. It's putting power into the grid. Uh, it's been in continuous operation since it was built. It began in 1897, and this machinery that was Canadian built, it, it's still uh, operating and still doing the job that it was designed to do way back in the 1800s. What you were telling me off camera is a speed versus volume. Well, it, it's pressure versus volume, really. And what it is, is is we take a relatively small amount of water, which is typical of the mountainous terrain that we have here. We've got a lot of, of smaller streams. And unlike the big uh, power generating facilities on the large rivers where you're using large volumes of water and dropping it at a relatively short distance to create a lot of energy, we, we are doing the, the opposite. We use a small volume of water and we drop at a tremendous distance. And the Pelton wheel, uh, which was an invention in the uh, 1880s, it's the most successful turbine for that kind of application. And, and even today, they're much the same as they were back then. There it is. It, is this efficient? Yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the technology that exists in the 1800s to design and build this plant, uh, compared to other technology that's advanced tremendously, it, it's changed relatively little. So when we were assessing this, this power plant to do the, the restoration work that we've been doing now for a number of years. It, it's never stopped. It's been in, in constant operation throughout. But the engineers calculated what we could produce from the best technology today in the same location with the same amount of water. And all we would gain is 3% by scrapping this uh, setup and going to something brand new. So relatively small difference in, in efficiency, which shows the, the uh, tremendous engineering that they had at the time for this kind of a, uh, of a plant. So this generates enough power for 300 homes, but I can't help but notice there aren't 300 homes in Sandin. No, well of course the power here now is exported, which never used to be the case. When, when the mining was booming here, there were eight power plants similar to this in Sandin, so they were harnessing all kinds of other water that isn't used anymore. But in, in those days they were using all the energy right here for, for the mining and for the community and, and so forth. Uh, today the excess energy is sent out into the grid, so it, this, this power generated here by this century old machine is powering homes in other places around North America. This may be a vast oversimplification, but you have six trucks all over North America. You're living in a very small and modest home. Can I guess you're putting a lot of your money into this? Well, putting almost everything into it. And uh, it, it's because, I, in my way of thinking, it's a very worthwhile project. It's a, for one, it's a historical project, which really uh, turns me on because I, I, I like the idea of preserving something that's as important as this. This is real Canadian heritage, but it's also a worthwhile power producer. And so I like the idea of, of our community being energy self-sufficient, producing the, the power in a green way. And so, yes, I, I, I mean, I live to, to do this because it, it is, it's not only the past, it's the model of the future as well. And we're working toward that. So 
at this stage we're, we're millions of dollars into the restoration of this and of course all these expensive hobbies are supported by more traditional work like, like our trucking business for example. So it's, a, it's an interesting uh, lifestyle but it's, but it's quite rewarding. So if you want to do this and come up to Sandon, and have a look through like I am, talk to Hal who is um, living history up here, doing a great job. Drive up to Sandon, say hello to Hal and come on in, see it. When we come back, we're going to show you a great ride in the Kootenays.